I get to record something? That gets my goat. Hi everybody and welcome to That Gets My Goat. My name is Big Anklevich. And I'm Rish Outfield. And here we are again. Here we are. So I had a little something that I wanted to talk to you about. Uh Uh-oh. And also, even beyond that, I want to get listener feedback on today's episode. Because I think there's a lot of different opinions and there's a lot of strong opinions about this particular subject. And so, um, yeah. So I'm just going to tell my stories and see what people have to say about it. Okay. Um, Basically, here's what happened. So this past weekend, my wife and I uh, went out of town on a little vacation. We went up to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Which actually I can't understand what the deal is with that place because the town itself is just called Jackson. So I don't know where the whole thing came in, where that comes from. Kind of confused. But anyways, we went up there and we uh, went to the uh, national park that's just up the street, uh, Grand Tetons National Park, which was fun. It was a nice little... uh, little place. Um, the first night we just went to Jackson Hole itself and just kind of walked around and looked at the town and, and so forth. And we had dinner uh, in town there. So we went to this restaurant and we went in and now this was the consensus opinion. Both me and my wife, without discussing this with each other, came to the conclusion that our waiter sucked. He was just awful. It was like he couldn't care less even that we were there. The guy couldn't even like muster a smile as he spoke and he just kind of mumbled his way through everything. He was like, yeah, so we got our special today, which is... (laughs) He wasn't particularly attentive, I'll have to say. And... Nothing was very special about the place either, although the prices sure were friggin' expensive. I got like the cheapest thing I could get just because I was just like, man, I don't want to pay that much just for food. I wound up having to pay 15 bucks just for a hamburger, and it wasn't a very good hamburger either. So anyways, this waiter was awful. And so when it came to the time that you're supposed to give somebody the tip, I was curious as what I'm supposed to do. Because I know, at least here in the USA, I don't know, I I know we got listeners that are kind of all over the place, and so there's different culture and different uh, norms for this kind of a thing. A guy that I was talking to at work today actually said that, like, if you go to, like, Japan or Asia, the, those the, the, those kind of areas, that they're offended if you try and tip them. That it's, it's, it's like you're trying to bribe them to do something special or something like that. You know, it's, it's offending their honor, is what he was saying, which I've never heard that before. But, but anyways, around here, um, they've made special concessions for people who own restaurants basically you can pay you pay the people that are servers less than like their minimum wage is less than everyone else's minimum wage by a couple of dollars because of the tips that they're supposed to get and so it makes me feel really bad to to like not tip somebody at all because then basically I'm making them work for probably less than minimum wage for what they're doing. But yeah, the general practice here is 15% is like your required tip, I should say, I guess. It's it's not like, it's the bare minimum, you know what I mean? It's, it's supposed to be 15%. Anything less than that and you're an a-hole or something. So what should I do with this guy who sucked? Who was absolutely awful. He didn't help us out in any way. He was barely could be, be bothered to give a crap that we were there. He was just lame. Do I tip him 15%? Do I tip him nothing? 
I don't know. See, the next day, we went out to dinner again. And this time, we got, like, the guy who was, I swear, he was, like, made to be a waiter. He was all smiles and, hey, welcome, everybody. Here, let me tell you about our place. We use the finest ingredients and blah, blah, blah. You know, he just went on and he was all smiles and happy and he was you know always hey how's everything is it great anything that you need you know he kept checking in on us and doing all that kind of stuff so he seemed like you know he deserved his tip but the funny thing is we went to breakfast or brunch I guess you couldn't really call it breakfast because we would have to have been up a little earlier for that but anyways we went to a uh, a brunch the next day and this guy that was our waiter at this place like we sat down and I saw this guy. he took our order and stuff and then I watched him afterwards and I was just like this guy he deserves like a double size tip or something I don't know what is going on here but the guy was running everywhere he was just he was running and he was like a, a basketball player doing like drills or something like that you know he was running and then he'd like pull up and like pivot you know to get around the tables and to avoid the customers and stuff like that it was just crazy i'm like man this guy he's gonna deserve a tip that guy from the first night totally did not deserve a tip but this guy he deserves like a double tip or something because you can see they must be down a person or something. He's obviously got more tables he can, than he can handle. He's going crazy. But then <laughs> what I ordered was a side of bacon and a Danish. That's all I wanted. And what he brought back to the table for me when it was done, when it was ready, was a side of sausage and a scone. And I was just like, um, uh, this isn't what I ordered. And my wife was like, oh, you, you were supposed to have a side. I, was, I wasn't even, I'm the kind of guy that's probably too nice uh, for his own good because I probably would have said nothing whatsoever. I would have just been like, well, I like sausage, okay. I guess I'll just have that. But my wife's like, oh, didn't you ask for bacon? And he, he the waiter was like, oh, is that... Is that not right? Was it not supposed to be sausage? I was like, eh, it was supposed to be a sign of bacon, so... He's like, oh, okay, well, I'll take care of that if you want. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> did he say if you want? Uh, he probably, I don't know. He probably did, or maybe he did. I don't know. But So he left it up to you whether... <laughs> whether I wanted to, if, if I needed to change it. I suppose, yeah. The other thing was we were at like a fancy bakery, you know what I mean? So I couldn't decide if this thing really was a scone that I had and I just got the wrong thing ah. or if that's just what a fancy Danish is like and what I've always had is like a poor person's Danish or something, you know what I mean? I didn't know whether that really was what I'd asked for. So I wound up not saying anything about the Danish. I just ate the scone or some of the scone. I didn't even eat the whole thing. A scone is not very good. I mean, I like some kind of scones. Like my wife will make scones where it's just fried bread dough, basically. Isn't that what a scone is? In my mind it is, but there's also scones. If you go to a restaurant, you'll get a scone, which is really similar to like a biscuit, but has like sugar on top, basically. So it's a mildly sweet thing. But yeah, I asked for a raspberry danish. I got a raspberry scone instead. So it had little bits of raspberry on top, some sugar. It wasn't particularly good. And I was not wanting that, so I was really kind of bummed. And worse yet is when we finally did leave, I checked because they had like a little area where the all the baked goods were out and you could just ask for something and buy it like a la carte or whatever and just you know take it to go and yeah i looked just to see to make sure what i had really was a scone not a danish and oh they had danishes there and they looked so freaking good they're these big danishes with like 
frosting and raspberry jam all in them and I was just like man it's just taunting me it's just there saying look I'm what you could have had but you didn't get it <laughs> so yeah I was I was really frustrated and then I wondered again what should I do this guy was running around like a freaking basketball player on drills shuffling and pivot footing and making sure he never traveled he always bounced the ball with at least once every three steps Guy was really good, but he totally botched our order. I think this the sausage thing came because of my wife. She got a breakfast burrito, but their regular breakfast burrito comes with sausage, and she asked if she could have bacon instead of sausage. Right after I said I wanted bacon, I think that might have caused the mix-up. And also, the guy wasn't uh, an American. He was from somewhere else, and he didn't. I don't think he spoke uh, English all that well which might also have to do with uh, some of the mix-up. But yeah, so, you know, what's, what's the deal? What do you think? Like, what would be your opinion as to how I should proceed in a situation like that? Shoot, I feel unprepared. Uh, I thought we were talking about cow tipping. Oh! And I had a lot of, uh, a lot of good stories on that. Uh, well, one <laughs> fairly good story. <laughs> Shoot, I don't know, man. I, I, I guess I'm a bit of a tightwad. <laughs> a bit? I've, I've never believed that uh, you should be obligated to tip. I've always felt like, you know, there's the, the money you pay for the food, and then there's the money you pay for the service. And uh, you can't barter the price of the food and say, you know, I didn't really like the eggs, so I'm not going to pay for them. But I've always felt like, you know, if you get bad service, then your tip will reflect that. And if you, I don't know, I, I don't go out to eat all that much really right. uh, to nice places. So you don't, I don't know. You don't tip I, the people at Burger King. <laughs> no. And I, I, I can't really imagine anybody that would, but do, does that happen? Like you're in the drive through. <laughs> no, seriously, you're in the drive through and they, they say, hey, okay, pull up and we'll bring you the food when, the food's ready, and the guy comes hustling out the front door and brings you your food. Do you tip that guy? Uh, I think for places like that, you're actually not allowed to. Like, they'll have signs up that say that they're not allowed to. And, like, the owners or whatever will say, like, hey, if somebody tries to tip you, you tell them, no, you can't accept it. Because uh, you can't accept it. If we catch you taking tips or whatever, then you're fired. Okay. The only time I really go out to eat a lot is when my relatives are in town. And I have an uncle who, he he's much more stringent about the tip than I am. Uh, you know, he always wants uh, to let the waiter know if he did a crappy job that not only does he not get a tip, but he's going to write him a little note on the napkin. And uh, he, he won't go to one of those restaurants that just includes the gratuity in the total and i've seen him you know chew out a maitre d or owner or manager or whatever it is for it's just like no you said this is how much the food was going to be and then you tacked on this extra percentage i'll tack on something if i feel like it if i feel like i got good service but you can't tack that on and it's i i have to admit that i i when he says that it makes a lot of sense to me and so Maybe I'm maybe I'm broken in that way. My <laughs> my my little sister was a waitress for years, and she always over over tips. And she says, "I know what it's like to, you know, only make three dollars an hour or whatever. You got to tip these people." And sometimes, if she feels I've under tipped, she will throw in extra mo money, which I don't know bothers me, but maybe it shouldn't. <laughs> it's just we have different uh, ideas on, uh, behind what what that whole tipping thing is. And, and so I, I, I don't know. I mean, I know you and I have gone to restaurants a couple of times with other people. And it's interesting to see what other people do. Now, one of the things that I absolutely hate is when everybody ordered different things and they decide to just divvy up the, uh, the final check evenly. And you're like, all I got was a Danish. <laughs> because I didn't get one when I went to Jackson Hole. 
and I'm paying for your Caesar salad and your, you know, whatever it is, uh huh, club sandwiches and I don't know. But that that's a totally different s- subject. Sorry, you wanted to say something a while. <laughs> well, yeah, back. I mean, it, it's kind of interesting because I mean, I, I I totally see where your uncle's coming from, but I also see where like your little sister's coming from. Like she knows what it's like to work for tips. And have people, you know, just stiff them just because they can. Like, I remember seeing something on Facebook where, uh, th- and this is probably the most despicable thing. It was like a this piece of paper, right? And it looked like, like a $100 bill, right? And then you okay. pick it up, and it actually is just like a $100 bill thing printed on the outside, and then you open it up and it's like, this is more valuable than $100 bills. Come to Jesus and you will have eternal life. <laughs> and it's just like, man, I mean, even if you think your message is that valuable, this is not cool to do to somebody. You don't just F with them, mess with their mind like that. And just, I mean, that kind of stuff happens. People will just be cheap. And they're like, yeah, I mean, I'm sure I should tip them, but F that, I can not tip them and save myself $5 or whatever. So I think what they really need to do is just do away with that crap and basically get rid of this exemption where you can pay your servers less money, make them have to be paid minimum wage too, then you can tip somebody if they did something really good, but otherwise you paid for your food and you just don't have to worry about it. So that a tip actually becomes what it's supposed to be again, which is a tip and not a requirement. Because yeah, I mean, I I talked to this guy at work about it. I was mentioning it to him and he was saying, this is the way it should have gone. That I should have tipped that first guy nothing. He didn't deserve a tip. He didn't do anything to deserve a tip. And he's basically in the wrong business if that's the way he treats people. He is ruining things for the restaurant. He's ruining things, you know, the the reputation and everything. And it reflects poorly on everybody. And, you know, it's, it's just bringing it all down. And what needs to happen is this guy needs to you know, come to understand that he's in the wrong business and find work somewhere else where he doesn't have to, you know, be nice to the public kind of a thing. And he said, you know, the the second guy, he deserved, you know, a good tip. He could have got, and, and, you know, it's gotten to the point where 15% is like a small tip and, you know, 20% is what you would at least give somebody who was good or more. And then he also says with this last guy, even though he got everything wrong and messed it all up, you know, it wasn't really his fault. He was obviously had way more to do, you know, and it wasn't his fault that he had more tables or or whatever going on. Uh, He was doing his best. And I, you know, it was my fault that I didn't say, hey, sorry to cause you more work, but this is supposed to be a Danish, not a scone. And if he messes up, yeah, we get him to fix it, but he still deserved a tip, especially considering how obviously overworked he was. That's what this guy at work said. I don't know. I think what we wound up doing was getting everybody. They all wound up with the same tip from us. It's just basically uh, 20% is what I've done pretty much always. Mostly because it's the easiest to figure out. You know what I mean? You just take 10% of your bill times two, and there you go. The other stupid thing that I like to do is just round my tips off. I'll make sure that my bill comes to an exact dollar amount (laughs) instead of uh, some weird change. Sure. That's that's not generosity, that's OCD. Yeah, that's probably what it is. (laughs) But I always do that. One thing that I've heard that that's also kind of a good idea to do just because this does happen on occasion, apparently, because I saw a news story about where it happened, where you know how you write your tip onto the credit card receipt? Sure. Uh, apparently, sometimes people will just 
be like, hey, that wasn't a good enough tip, and they'll just change what you wrote. They'll turn the seven into an eight or whatever. Sure. Uh, yeah. After you've left, give themselves some extra money. Um, so I figure if you round it off, it's uh, harder to get away with something like that because you'll know, you'll be able to remember really easily, hey, I, it was 30 even. They're not going to change it to 31 or something on that. I don't know. See, until you go into work and there's a story about a man who left a $300 tip and you realize it was you. <laughs> it's one of those heartwarming <laughs> stories they play around the holidays. Right. Where the single mother waitress gets this amazing tip from some um, stranger and uh, it was you. <laughs> and now you're like, wow, that's not as heartwarming as I had thought. Yeah, I originally, <laughs> that's funny. Um, so uh, w where is this amazing country that I want to go to where a tip is considered an insult? Uh, I heard it's just the Asian countries, uh, Japan and places like that where... Yeah, they, they consider that you trying to bribe them to treat them special or something like that. So they don't want that crap. You're, you're offending their honor, apparently, by doing this kind of stuff. Huh. I don't know if that's true, uh, if, if there is such a thing, because I've never been there. So I don't know. But uh... My uncle used to tell these stories about working in Vegas uh, this is a different uncle. This is the one that uh, is irreverent. Uh -huh. And uh, he worked for the casinos. And he would have all sorts of amazing stories about celebrities that came in. And he would be happy to tell me how much they tipped or didn't tip. And the biggest tips that he ever got. And so stuff like that. And, uh, and then, yeah, he told me that it was an unwritten rule when you were first in the the job when you first got hired that you gave 100% of your tips to uh for lack of a better word the mob it's just like there there there's somebody at the casino that you're going to give all your tips to and and I was just like wait what all and it's like yeah you're 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 basically paying your dues you're letting them know that you are loyal and that you understand the pecking order and in return, they will send high-powered clients your way after you've proven yourself. And I was just like, w w but didn't this bother you to not make it? And he's like, yeah, well, I, I understood. They told, you know, somebody had taken me aside and say, make sure you do this. And so I told the new people when they came on to do this. And I, I, for some reason, that just, I don't know, it really bothered me. But then when he'd tell me these awesome stories about, you know, how much so-and-so tipped him and, you know, all this uh doing a line of Coke with David Hasselhoff stories, I, I was just like, wow, okay, that sounds like the coolest job I've ever heard. Yeah. Sorry, did I say that out loud? <laughs> and I know that's not the same thing as a waiter, but being somebody that drive, brings your car around or being somebody who brings your bags up to your room or, you know, he was a limo driver for a long, long time after he was a bell bellman. They didn't call them bellhops, thank goodness. Or um, bellboys. It's not exactly the same as a... Uh, as a waiter or, as a, or a waitress, but I, you know, there's the same hustle or personality or, or whatever it is that you've, uh, you're supposed to demonstrate. And yeah, it's weird. I, I just don't, I don't suppose I have worked any job like that. Uh, uh -huh. I guess the closest I've ever come would be, you know, being one of those cart, um, costumed mascots, which I only did for two days and was really, really hard work. But if Goofy poses for a picture with for your kids, can you slip him twenty bucks? Uh, I think you're only allowed to slip Goofy the tongue. Uh, <laughs> I don't know that you can do that. I would I would bet that Goofy is again like like the, the Japanese. The, no, no, not like the Japanese, but like the Burger King employees, where they're not allowed that kind of crap. Uh, for one thing. All, these days, anyways, they have all sorts of places where you can wait in line to pose with Goofy or whoever. They have a little special place, and you actually have to go and wait in the line and go through this line to get up to where Goofy is. Then you can take pictures, but they also take pictures for you, 
and then you can buy the you know the Disney print of the picture of you and your kid or whatever with Goofy. So, you know, I'd be willing to bet that, yeah, that's not, not allowed for them to take tips. Interesting. But you notice that all of these, um, what, what, what do you call those costumed characters? Well, there's, there's a word for those, right? The cast members? Is that what they call them at Disney? Yeah, I think they do. Okay, so uh, about all of those cast members have a human handler, right? right? It's somebody that leads them around, makes sure that they, you know, they don't get beat up or don't walk into a fence post or get raped or anything like that. I, you know, it just seems like a given that you pay the handler for a night alone with <laughs> Mickey. The, the pimp. You pay the pimp. Yeah, maybe. But I, yeah, I don't think that that's, uh, that that's allowed. Uh, I could be wrong. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. If uh, people who are listening now have been cast members before, uh, so maybe they can uh, fill us in on that. You know, we actually uh, went to school with a guy that was a cast member. I don't know if you remember that guy, but the part he played the part of the Beast at uh, Disney World in Orlando. And uh, you weren't even allowed to take a picture of yourself when you were only partially uh, in your costume, if you know what I'm saying. Um, if you were in your costume but didn't have your head. Pants? Yeah, your your pants or your head or whatever, you couldn't take a picture of yourself. He had a, this guy had taken a picture of himself and it was, you know, he couldn't really show it to very many people because of word got out that he'd done such a thing. I think they would send the mob after him to... Uh, rub him out. Which, well, okay, which well, by the way, going back to the the story about your uh, your your uncle who had to give the mob his tips. If it's the mob, you just give them your tips. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> you, yeah, I guess so. You don't mess with the mob. You don't want the mob to be like, yeah, okay, well. Uh, we're just going to take you out into the desert and uh, not bring you back. Uh, but the, Okay, so the, but the Disneyland thing, or let's call it Disneyland, not Disney World. Come on, man. Well, it was Disney World hey. where the guy actually worked, so that's hey. why I said that. I've asked you. I'll call it Disneyland. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay, thanks. Actually, I only say Euro Disney. Oh, okay. Well, that works. Uh, the... <laughs> But the reason they don't want him taking a picture when they're not fully costumed is because these are sacred characters and they want to maintain the illusion that they're actually them. Uh, you're treating the characters with respect or is there some other reason? Yeah, I think it's that. It's that they are them. They are not people in a suit. They are really Mickey Mouse kind of a thing. I think they just want to, you know, children... If they see pictures like that, it'll, you know, destroy the suspension of disbelief or whatever. I don't know. It's something like that. I think that's why they do that. Okay. I, but, you know, but you always hear about, you know, the celebrities that get to go through the tunnels and they don't have to stand in any lines. This is Disneyland again we're talking about. Um, surely somebody like Will Smith going on a, a personal Smith vacation with his family, is allowed to tip Goofy, right? Or are these, what would you call it? These these cast members, they have paid their dues also, so to speak. And once they have done that and sweated in the grumpy, the dwarf costume for a certain amount of time, then they are allowed to move up to accompany the Smith family on their personal tour of Disneyland. Yeah, that might be it. These cast members get the honor of being with Will Smith. And so Will Smith doesn't need to tip them anything but a smile and one of those, one of his trademark chuckles. Maybe he might have to tip them a, I gots to get me one of these. But uh, that's probably as far as he has to go. I, I guess I'm kind of a cold-hearted person. 
because I, you know, I don't put myself in the shoes of the waiter or the waitress or whatever. Um, I, it costs so much to go out to eat that, uh, you know, lots of times I, I, I am too stingy probably, but you know, you, you do see how harried some of these waiters are and how many tables they have to balance and all that stuff. And, and maybe if I put myself in their shoes more, I, I, I would tip more, but, uh, I still can't get behind the idea that it's, you know, that I am the a-hole if I don't tip after bad service. You know, we, we, they expect a tip, but we expect a certain level of service. Uh huh. And any rudeness or inattention, um, I don't know. I, mean, I guess you can try and get them in trouble or something like that with, with their supervisors, but it just seems far easier to leave little rather than the ton that you left this guy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I'm just curious what everybody else has to say about this. So I do want comments from anybody who listens. Please get on and tell me what you think I should have done. Uh, sadly, I'm sure I did it wrong. I basically uniformly tipped everybody the same damn thing when they all probably deserve something different. I know that people who have worked as, uh, servers, uh, you know, I'm sure they have different opinions than others who never have, like you or I. I another weird thing that we haven't mentioned is that a lot of places you tip the waiter but those tips are shared among all the people. So like the bus boy and like the, the cook and all those people uh, to get the tips divided up among them all. So Does that not seem when, fair to you? Well, that's fine. I'm just saying if the waiter sucks and does a bad job and so you don't tip him, you're also stiffing the other people who really had nothing to do with it. So... It just adds another layer of complication. Uh, okay. uh, so anyways, yeah, let us, let us know what you think. Uh, I'm just curious to know because, yeah, I'm, I'm, I didn't do it right. I'm willing to, it, to bet. Um, I'd just like to see what you guys think was the right way to go and what your opinion on it is because, yeah, it's, I don't know, it's a, it's a, a weird thing. But anyways, yeah, that was my uh, my topic for today's That Gets My Goat. Hopefully it was interesting. Hopefully it didn't suck. Uh, if it did, well, there's always next time. Yeah, I, I, we'll, we'll, we'll try and do better next time, folks, if we didn't deserve a tip today. <laughs> That's um, right. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Um... I'm Ben Bing Anklevich. And I'm Rich wow, let me, let, Hold on. i got to say that one more time because it sounded like I said Bing Anklevich. Oh, I like that. I've been, be, I've been Big Anklevich. And I have also been Big oh. Anklevich. Oh, oh, I'm oh. sorry. No, I, I have never been Big Anklevich. Or big in any way. All right. See you later, folks. Good night. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Sad but true. Uh, do you remember? Uh, and, and we can cut this out. This because this is an outtake, folks. Thanks for listening to the show. Uh, there was a documentary made a couple of years ago, three, four years ago. I think it was called Disney After Dark, and oh. it was a gorilla film made at Disneyland with hidden cameras and stuff like that. And it was a documentary about what goes on. You know at Disneyland after it closes and you know all of the 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 creepy twisted bullshit of of tunnels underneath and all the dead bodies that you know they find at the bottom of the Matterhorn horn each each month no no it, there there were no dead bodies but it was uh you know showing the 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 seedy side of Disneyland the stuff that goes on and you know once the park closes for normies then, you know, Miley Cyrus and her friends get to have Disneyland from, you know, 11 p.m. to 4 in the morning to do whatever they want. And 
and stuff like that. And I know that Disney uh, really, the Buena Vista really tried to squelch that documentary. And it was the Streisand uh-huh. effect, really. We never would have heard of that documentary if Disney hadn't made a big stink about it. Because, um, uh-huh. you know, it was a no-budget thing that was made on the sly and didn't even get, you know, regular distribution. But the second Disney says, no, you cannot release that, then everybody wants to see it. Right. But uh, yeah, I would be really I... curious to watch, to see what, you know, how the tunnels work and, and, you know, all the community that we don't see and blood removal and all sorts of stuff that actually has, actually goes on, you know, how often somebody dies at Disneyland and the people that are on call just waiting for that to happen and to to brush it under the rug, really, sweep it so that nobody, so it doesn't ruin anybody's day and nobody sees it. That sort of stuff is interesting to me. Yeah, I've heard that. I want to say it was I've heard about that, but maybe it was something else. I don't remember for sure, but yeah, I heard something they were talking about. Just all the stuff, like they were getting ready for some new thing that was going on, getting ready for the new parade or whatever. All that crap, I guess, they have, because Disneyland's open, you know, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. or whatever every day. So to get ready, ready for something new, they have to uh, do it all in the middle of the night. So it was, you know, these people were practicing their parade and working out their dances and all that kind of stuff in the middle of the night. I, I think they also have like some pl- a bunch of underground crap there, apparently. Um, like an underground a- cemetery. Yeah, they have like underground like rehearsal rooms and all sorts of stuff like that. If there's ever an earthquake in LA, which luckily there aren't very often, you know, there's there's going to be a lot of collapsed uh, things going on there on uh, in Disneyland, but but yeah, uh so yes, sorry. Okay, so that was all the outtake? Right. Yeah, that was the outtake. Good night, folks. 